In this lessons episode, explore how novelty and mental challenge protect the brain from cognitive decline. Learn how trying new activities builds neural pathways that delay dementia. Learn why staying socially and mentally active is more powerful than relying on diet or supplements. And learn how Ulysses contracts help us beat temptation and make better decisions for our future selves. One more, one more thought and question on memory and sort of brain health and brain optimization. Uh, I've, I've spoken to uh, Stephen Kotler, who does a lot of work on flow state, and he's written a lot, uh, several books, I don't know how many. And he was speaking about uh, uh, activities that ward off Alzheimer's and dementia. And I don't know about the science behind it. He's, he has a lot of conviction that certain kinds of activities um, can ward off Alzheimer's, dementia. Uh, is there anything that is studied or proven to ward off Alzheimer's dementia, if that's something that's in your family? He was mentioning, if I remember correctly, he mentioned that tennis was one of the most beneficial activities because it's cognitive and physical at the same time, which apparently is something that is not prevalent in, in many other sports. Um, I don't know where, uh, I think he's done research on this, but regardless, in your studies, uh, have you found anything like that to be the case where any sort of activity prevents cognitive decline? Maybe any foods, any, anything at all, really? I'll tell you, the whole, the whole thing comes down to challenging your brain uh, with, with novelty. So the key is, um, and, and, and you can fit anything you want in here, including tennis, but the key is if you are an expert tennis player, then playing tennis in your 60s or something is not going to benefit you. The thing that will benefit you is to not play tennis, but to start something else that you've never done before, that you're terrible at, that you need to learn how to do. That's the thing. And this is true across whatever it is, whether it's, uh, I don't know, people always ask me about Sudoku or um you know, sailing or whatever the thing is, it's got to be something that's challenging. What you always want to do, but especially if your brain is getting closer to cognitive impairment, is put yourself between the levels of frustrating but achievable. So you're taking on a new task. Let's say you've never done Sudoku before, then that's cool. You start Sudoku, you don't know what you're doing, you're putting a lot of effort into it. The point is what that's doing in the brain is building new roadways. You're, you're making new things happening with your synapses that you haven't done before. As soon as you get good at Sudoku, then you have to drop that and pick up something else like tennis, like whatever the new thing is that you haven't done. But the key is the challenge. And that's where you always want to be. And weirdly, that's actually our best thing that we know about for, you know, uh, for dementia um, is is challenging the brain. Obviously, there's lots of pharmaceutical work going on and other things like that. I, as far as foods go. I, I don't think there's anything uh, that's particularly convincing about that. Um, if one ha already has a balanced diet, I don't think there's some magical new food uh, that one can do there. But the key is to constantly build new roadways and bridges in the brain. There was a study that's been going on for, I think, like 30 years now called the Religious Order Study. And this is on nuns who live in convents um, in the Chicago area. Um, who all agreed that they would donate their brains upon their death. And so over the years, different nuns have, have passed away and donated their brains and the brains have been autopsied. And the, the stunning result from the study is that a number of these nuns actually had Alzheimer's disease. Their brains were ravaged, um, you know, molecularly. You can see this in the tissue. The tissue is degraded, their brain tissue. Um, but even though they had Alzheimer's disease, they, they didn't show the cognitive deficits that, that one would expect. And this came as a giant surprise. But the reason is because these women live in these convents till the day they die. And in these convents, they have chores and responsibilities. They have this very active social life. And, you know, when you have an active social life, you're, you're arguing with people and fighting with people and, you know, getting along with people and whatever. Uh, it's we sometimes say in the field that there's nothing as hard for the brain as other people. And so it's a constant challenge. They're constantly keeping their brains active. 
And as a result, even though their brains are degenerating, they are um, they're building these new roadways. Compare this to people who retire and don't have that kind of challenge and sit at home alone and watch television on the couch. That's a very different thing that's happening as their brain tissue degenerates. There's no new roadways being built. And that's why you can see the cognitive um, correlates of the degeneration. That's fascinating. So retiring, very re retiring with no activity, no, um, no learning new skills, no socializing, very bad for your brain. I would even, it's interesting, but I guess by virtue of what you just said, flow state is, is great for productivity and for work, but it's actually useless for preventing cognitive decline, which is ironic because everybody keeps trying to, how do I get the flow state? How do I, you know, how do I optimize my four hours in the morning where nothing distracts me and I'm completely in the zone? That that's exactly right. Um, you, you got it. That what what's funny is brains are always in this middle state where they're trying to balance novelty and familiarity. So if you're doing too much novelty, uh, it's tough, and the brain really wants to just be. For, for example, I just returned from an eight day uh, hike in Spain, a, a pilgrimage along Camino de Santiago, and you know each night you're sleeping in a different little inn and then you walk 15 miles to the next place and so on. And, and when I came home just a couple of days ago, I really just wanted to be in my bed because I thought, oh, it's familiar and I want to be in this bed for several nights instead of a different one each night. So it's, it's tough when you've got uh, too much novelty. Um, but the key thing that you just want to make sure you're always avoiding is too much familiarity. And you're exactly right. In the flow state, you're saying, okay, this is something I've trained my brain on. It knows exactly what to do. And I don't have to challenge it and think about something new here. So you don't want too much of that. What would you say that are some, some common habits that are really damaging to either our brain's health or just brain's potential? Yeah. I mean, so many things that, uh, that we all do. Um, obviously, you know, diet is one, unless people think about it. What's cool, what, what I think is neat is that just over the course of my lifetime so far, I, I, I feel like I've seen a real change in the way that society thinks about diet now. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe people just talk about this on social media about eating clean and then they don't actually do it. Who knows? But um, I think some people try, but maybe probably that's true, too. That's <laughs> to be honest. You know what I find interesting? I, I see these uh, these weightlifting videos on on YouTube and I, I watch these things and I try to implement some new techniques and whatever. These things all have you know, millions or tens of millions of views. And I think that's awesome that so many people are watching this thing about like, you know, the five best, you know, back exercises or five best bicep exercises. I think, hey, that's so great that so many people are watching this. But what I don't know is how that translates. In other words, do people, are there millions of people watching it that not doing it? I'm not, I'm not certain. Anyway, um, as far as things uh, that we do, obviously, it, or it feels to me anyway that there's been a lot more emphasis about sleep, and this is massively important. One thing that I feel like I've seen a change on as well is alcohol consumption, which is related to the sleep issue. Um, it's become more socially cool to not drink alcohol, which is a great idea, right? Because alcohol, among other things, disrupts your sleep. Um, and so at least in the circles that we spin in, uh, a lot of people are not drinking in a way that, let's say, our parents' generation, everybody drank. So I think that's a that's a really cool hack that's been happening socially. Um, you know, and obviously uh, one generation ago, everyone would smoke cigarettes and there were these ads, you know, nine out of 10 physicians recommend Camel brand of cigarettes or something. Uh, it's crazy to look back at those sorts of ads. But anyway, so the, there are all sorts of bad habits that people are are working on. Uh, to my mind, one of the main interesting challenges in life is that we all have temptations that we, in our long-term thinking self, would rather not give into whether that's drugs or alcohol or some people have gambling or some people have sex addictions or whatever the issue is that people have when they're when they're really in a moment of sober thinking about who do I want to be in the world they're they're on a hike and they think okay I I don't want to do that anymore 
the question is, how do you get yourself to actually not do it? Because we are very different people at different times. And when you're faced with the temptation, you're probably going to do it. And so my uh, one of my deep interests, and this is actually my my next book, um, is on something called the Ulysses Contract, which is how we make deals with ourselves through time. Um, the uh, listeners may remember the story of Odysseus, also known as Ulysses, who is coming home from the Trojan War and realized he was going to pass the island of the Sirens. And, and he really wanted to hear their songs. But of course, he knew that, like any mortal man, their, their song would seduce the, the whole ship to, to come crash into the rocks and everyone would drown. So what he did is he filled his, sailor, his uh, you know, sailor's ears with beeswax and he had them lash him to the mast so that he could hear the siren song, but he couldn't do anything about it because he instructed them, I want you to go straight and just ignore me if I'm screaming and yelling. The point is the, the Ulysses of sound mind, who was, you know, tens of miles from the island, knew that the future Ulysses, who, who would be right next to the island, would behave badly. What he was doing is making sure that when faced with temptation, the future Ulysses wouldn't, uh, wouldn't behave badly. So um, what I find very interesting is how we can make Ulysses contracts in our own lives to make sure that, you know, for example, we show up at the gym. One way to do that is to tell your friend you'll you'll meet him there at, you know, 9 a.m. And if you tell your friend you'll meet him there, then you wake up, you maybe feel a little lazy. You feel like skipping. You think, well, I can't because he's going to be there. So then you show up. So that's a very simple way of making Ulysses contract for people who are trying to you know, battle drug or alcohol addictions. There are all these things you can do, like make sure you never carry more than $20 in your pocket. Cause if somebody offers you drugs on the street, you'll say, Oh shoot, I don't have the money. Or for an alcoholic, the important thing is to clear all the alcohol out of the house. Cause even if you think, okay, look, I've, I know what to do. I'm not going to drink this thing. If it's there, you'll drink it at some point. So um, there are all kinds of things if we think about ourselves as creatures through time who are not the same person in all moments, I think this is a very powerful hack to, to help our future behavior. Thanks for tuning in. If you found this valuable, don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. And if you want to dive deeper into this conversation, check out the links in the description to watch the full episode. See you in the next one.